To learn drawing is to learn a visual language where the sum is greater than its parts. Marks, like words, contain both formal information and inflection in varying degrees. And the great thing about learning this language is that you already know it. This said, how we read and understand the meaning of marks in a drawing can be developed. We can increase our understanding of what constitutes good mark making by asking ourselves 1. Are the marks appropriate to the artist's intentions? Are they right for the job? 2. Are they alive? Do they embody and express the energy intended by their maker? 3. Do the marks help communicate the qualities of light, form, volume and surface of the subject? 4. Do the marks present the eye with changes of pace and rhythm that offer variety and interest? And 5. Does the drawing express and stretch the properties of both the subject and of the medium that the drawing is made from? It is subjective. But asking yourself these questions when evaluating a drawing will help you to develop sensitivities that allow your marks to become visual poetry. But, first you have to develop your repertoire, and this requires play. In a response drawing, you draw in response to marks either you or someone else made intentionally, accidentally, or found. Responding to marks that are not yours encourages you to expand your mark-making vocabulary by making marks you aren't normally inclined to make. Here I am using watered-down acrylic paint and a rag to make as random marks as I am able from which to draw. Once the mark was dry, I began to draw on it started with a 6B pencil, just making random marks, but I didn't like the shine that the, the graphite gave. So I swapped it out for a charcoal pencil, which made a much more satisfying chalky dark mark. Now I'm not drawing a picture of a thing, this looks like that but rather just responding to the shapes, tones and rhythms presented by the marks. A flick extended from a curved edge, some wee dits, a dark mass. You'll see that I'm changing my grip often to facilitate the variety of marks. experimental. Here I'm rolling the pencil whilst drawing small curls. And here using a blending stump. I used that light uh, pencil rolling technique to extend from these drippy bits without too controlled a line. And then work back into these little ditty marks, extending them into shapes, sort of. Next, I kind of extended the horizontal line of the biggest drip and then used my blending stump to make gestural, intersecting lines. And 
And finally, I got really carried away with some broad strokes and blending. Remember, the purpose of this exercise is to expand my mark making repertoire so that when I want to be deliberately expressive in future drawings, I'm able to draw upon and control a broader range of marks. Like all things, Mark making is improved by regular practice. Work on a series of drawings inspired by one thing for a month. This offers a chance to work out every angle of a subject, experimenting with mark making and media. Draw in response to a variety of environmental and sensory influences. Your imagination is the limit to this one. If this is all getting too freaky deaky for you, make drawings which express opposites noisy, quiet, hot, cold, etc. Your individual mark making adds the lifeblood to your drawing that sets it apart from anyone else's. Your personal mark making or gesture is as unique as your signature and practicing is the only way to find it.